Let's talk about um, AMD advancing AI. So I'm going to kind of do the highlight reel, and then I'm sure you'll like to get into the to the to the to the mud with with it because you're always really good at that stuff. But this day, okay, first of all, this day was a big day that had been in the works for a couple of years. Okay, we've been hearing about the MI series. We've been hearing that AMD is going to have an Nvidia compete strategy. We've been hearing the market needs. A compete a competitive data center GPU. We were hearing that maybe it was a inference a powerhouse, and then we heard maybe it will be training and inference. And on this day, um, AMD was able to march out with a one very very competitive data center GPU for uh, the cloud, the Mi 300X. Second, they were able to march out with partners that are incredible validators of what they are doing. Meta, OpenAI, Microsoft, on stage with them talking about utilizing their new MI300X as part of their go-to-market strategy for different uses, some uh, for all uses, some for inference uses, but nonetheless using the AMD products. The company was able to come out and talk about higher layers of abstraction in their Rockham 6, which is the critical uh, get it right that AMD needed to be able to lure in a broader part of the ecosystem to be developing for their hardware. Um, and had some very positive momentum around Rockham. Um, they were also able to announce a, uh, you know, on-prem friendly for HPC and accelerated computing. They had the, you know, the likes of Dell and others on stage uh, that they were partnering up with this. And then Pat, they really ran down the gambit and brought PC it. And they're like, well, let's not just make it a data center show. Let's do PCs too while we're here. And we're able to announce the newest version of their AI PC. You and I got to talk to their entire executive team, talk to Lisa Sue, had a great interview. Can't wait to share that with all of you. Uh, also talked to their as a data center, their CTO, um, you know, Forrest, Mark Papermaster, others got to talk to their AI PC team. Very, very exciting week. But Pat, here's the question. This is a question everybody asked. There's two questions. One, is AMD competitive with NVIDIA? Two, is AMD uh, going to be able to, are the cloud providers going to be a partner or a competitor and when does that happen? Those are the two questions that everybody asked me this week. Um, I'm both, uh, you know, US and on international CNBC, we both did some of that. Um, and those are the questions. You know, one, Pat, this is not a finite race that's been run and it's not over. Lisa mentioned that. You look at the TAM expansion, you look at the demand, you look at the supply chain, you look at the need for alternatives. AMD is in the race. They got a multi-billion dollar pipeline, and I think that pipeline will expand. I think this announcement is validation. And by the way, I still think NVIDIA's got a really big lead, and they're going to continue innovating. So it's not A and B. It's a, it's not A or B. It's A and B. And the other thing is, look, I think that the cloud providers are going to continue to be good purveyors of merchant silk into the world. They will build vertical integrations. They will partner up with all of the silicon providers, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, and they will do that for as long as it makes sense. And this is collaboration and competition in its best. And by the way, they don't even talk to the same people about it all the time. <laughs> it's just not the same thing, you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that you've got companies that are deploying workloads in the cloud that want Intel, some want AMD, some want NVIDIA. They are going to be successful because they're building a good product with good specs. Pat, last thing I want to say, because I can talk for a long time about this, but I'm trying to keep this on time is that I was really impressed at the boldness of AMD. They're not always the company that wants to really come out and, 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 and punch the competitor, but to some extent, I thought they were very bold coming out. And, and I know there's a new um, GPU coming uh, from NVIDIA, but look, you can only compare what's out and available in the market right now. And AMD was able to take advantage of the moment, comparing with what's in the market and show impressive training and really incredible inference capabilities on the new MI300X, which that, let's be candid, was the star of the show. Dan, there is so much to talk about here. Yep. You're right, we could do an entire show, but tune into all their interviews we did with the senior executives, uh, Lisa Sue and and three Mark to four. Uh, Mark Papermaster. Exactly, Victor Pang. So, I was on CNBC last night, like you. It's funny. They should just bring us on at the same time. That would be hilarious. Um, but here's where I am. It took AMD many years 
to field a credible AI focused GPU, and it's the MI300X. This is not just about uh, NVIDIA having a 52 week lead time. This is about AMD bringing in some killer hardware. And also on its sixth generation, I think after 13 years, uh, I wrote one of my first white papers I, I, I wrote, we published, uh, was on Rockham. But Rockham, which is essentially like NVIDIA's CUDA, um, this abstraction layer uh, that's, that sits above, let's say, um, or sits below like a PyTorch, like a framework. You, you, know, you can directly uh, write to that, but it is competitive for AI. And I would say Rockham 5 was competitive for machine learning. Rockham 6, and based upon what people said on stage, and even Meta, like people don't give Meta enough credit for the research, the science, and the code that they delivered. They freaking, freaking invented PyTorch, folks, okay? Um, and they're very good. And they, they have Llama models now that, that, that are open source to really shake up this industry. And for them to say anything nice about Rock'em 6, uh, I think is a is a huge um, huge accolade for the company. Now they didn't say we're using it for sure 100% and not just going directly to PyTorch, but for them to say anything nice uh, about that, I, I I thought was a big uh, a big deal. And you know you can't argue uh, on X with Azure and OCI. Um, and Dell Technologies and Lenovo and Supermicro. By the way, Lenovo and Supermicro especially equates to people are asking for AMD. Dell doesn't sell what Dell customers don't ask for. They do not push products. They, that's just not their, their thing. Uh, Lenovo did in the last three to four years help create markets for AMD, and in in some ways, I like to look. They're kind of the replacement for HP and HPE as it relates to partnering uh, with with AMD. Uh, final word on AI PCs. Uh, it's interesting. I I really didn't even talk a whole lot about that that the company had this seventy four hundred, this Ryzen seventy four hundred. Not a lot of people were talking about it. Uh, and quite frankly, it's because of the software. Uh, what struck me is that uh, AMD's PC strategy was is very similar to Intel's in the beginning, which is we're going to leverage CPU, GPU, and NPU to deliver the, the, the AI magic. Uh, that's a challenge, and it takes resources because it's harder to program across CPU, GPU, and NPU. And... Uh, as it is to just going to the NPU. Uh, and that that's where I think Qualcomm in the middle of the year is going to have an advantage on this whole thing. And it's going to be interesting uh, how how this parses out. But but at a minimum, uh, AMD will be competitive with AI PCs in 2024 as long as they can get some key ISVs on board optimizations in the beginning for this, CPU, GPU, NPU that doesn't heat up the system. Uh, and then secondly, uh, they didn't say that that they're uh, in their roadmap that they were going to up the NPU, but it's just kind of an obvious thing, right? That's going to happen. Um, you know, uh, Qualcomm's got the 40 to 45 uh, tops uh, showing up uh, mid-year, and it's, and it's just so easy to program.